Morning guys, it's uh, Paul from Bullies Painting Parlour. I hope you're well this morning. Um, a lot of people recently have been asking me how I do true metallic metal bronze. Uh, focus, focus, focus. There we go. So this is going to be a typically low budget, um, very quick talk through about how to do bronze paintwork. Um, and I have uh, a competition prize from eons ago from the Angels that I uh, now have some time to actually finish. Um, and the world's most patient angel has been waiting for this. Um, and this is a rack and water roll. And what I'm gonna do is show you how I go about doing the bronze armor um, and show you that actually it's incredibly good fun and really quite quick once you understand how light works. So before we start here, I've just got an old palette lid and then on the colours that I'm going to use, you can see I have got uh, Scale 75 Abyssal Blue, Scale 75 Black Metal, Army Painter Green Skin, uh, Scale 75 uh, Cantabric, Cantabric Blue, uh, Scale 75 Viking Gold, Scale 75 Elven Gold, and Scale 75 Thick White. Um, you notice there's a big uh, there's a big pattern of scale 75 there. Uh, my most of my paints are scale 75 now. I'm a massive fan of them. They do the best metallics in the world, in my humble opinion. Um, but I also like the combinations of matte pigment and metallic pigment. It gives a really nice effect. Um, so I am. But in, in order for me to pull this off properly, I need to have some satin as well. So first off, I just want to get the camera in the right place. So. If I just put that down there, I want to get in the camera in the place that I can actually see what I am painting and try not to get in the way. Okay, so first off, I'm going to do all of this with a old GW shade brush. And when I say old, you can see the tip is absolutely fucked. Um, this is ideal for this kind of work. So the first thing we're going to do is, I hope you can actually see this when I start doing it. First thing I'm going to do is get the abyssal blue. And if we work on, actually, if I can keep it down here, you might be able to see it. So if we work on this section here, um, what I'm going to do is really slapdashly just bang on the abyssal blue with very little pressure on the brush. So what I want is the stipple to spider all over the place. And you can see that the brush will start to come apart and separate. And that's fine. You just got to make sure that every once in a while you give it another dunk so that the, the stipple stays consistent. Okay. I'm only going to do a small section, obviously, otherwise, there's no point. So the blue, which is the base layer, is now down. I'm going to see if I can get some focus on that texture. So we can see. You can see it's pretty slack dash and pretty rough. Okay. And pretty slack dash and pretty rough is the theme of this style of painting and what we want to actually do. So we're back in focus. Oops. Put the daylight lamp back on. Hopefully you can all see that. Whether actually you see what I do or not isn't actually that important. It's more the theory of it. We're now going to take some scale 75 black metal and we're going to take some uh, army painter green skin. We're going to mix the two together 50-50, which produces a very dirty green semi-metallic color and we are gonna do exactly the same thing and just spatter that all over the armor for the section that we want to be painting okay We're then going to add more green into the mix. 
So we're left with a kind of almost a metallic version of Dark Angel's green, to be honest. And then we're going to go and we're going to hit in with the same stippling, quite slapdashly, just some of the darker points of the panel that we're doing. We're now going to take some uh, of the uh, Canterbrick blue and we're going to add it in to the mix. Now I'm going to take some dwarf, uh, sorry, some Viking gold from scale 75, and I'm going to add again to that mix, but I'm going to add a tip more green in now. Which is going to give me a patinaed green blue. Roll it on the paper to get some of the excess paint off. I'm going to pick it up at this point. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is to start to think about my light source. So the light source for this piece is uh, from top right as you look at the model. So what I'm going to do now is just start to stipple on to the model. following the light source. Okay, now I'm going to add some more Viking gold into this mix and I'm going to go again gonna at this point stop and wait for it to dry so I'm going to stop the video at eight minutes and we will come back in a little while once it's dry because everything I've just done there is all still wet I'll move it out of the white light and try to see if I get it to focus what you can see is this hammered metallic pattern completely artificially produced but it looks like the strikes of hammers hundreds of times and it's working well with the mixture of matte and metallic pigments is starting to build up that light catching that light catching hammered metallic effect that we actually want to go for you see now we're nowhere near done yet but we also know that this wasn't slow it was pretty quick to get to this point okay thanks very much guys and I'll be back with part two shortly.